O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. Good morning and welcome to our morning prayer for this Wednesday, August 7th. This week we've been considering some of the sections and verses of Paul's letter to the Philippians and how they impact our daily Christian lives. Today we're focusing on chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, where Paul says of Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the verse right before this section, Paul tells Christians to copy the attitude of Christ Jesus. And then in this section, he lays out the humble, selfless attitude of Jesus. At the same time, this section becomes one of the greatest, most significant statements on the person of Jesus Christ and his humiliation and exaltation. First, Paul considers Christ's humiliation. He says he was in very nature God. During his time here on earth, Jesus kept his divine nature, his divinity, but he also took on a human nature. So he's known as the God-man. But while Jesus deserved to be treated like God, he didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. That phrase, made himself nothing, could literally be translated, Jesus emptied himself. Jesus was God, and he was always fully aware of that, and he always had the full glory and capabilities of God. He showed that every time he did things like read people's hearts and minds or perform a miracle. But for the most part during his time on earth, he set aside the full and constant use of his divine nature. Jesus lived like every other human being, minus sin. In fact, he humbled himself to the point of death on a cross. Physically speaking, Jesus' crucifixion was terribly, terrifically painful. But the spiritual pain he suffered was even worse. He was rejected by his own father because he was bearing our sin and the sin of the whole world. At the same time, Christ gave us his righteousness so that through faith in him, we are counted as holy and righteous and sinless before God. For that completed work of redemption, God exalted Christ to the highest place. At his resurrection, Christ resumed the full and constant use of his divine power and glory and authority. Those things were given to his human nature as well. So now Jesus appears kind of like he did at his transfiguration or how he appeared to St. John in the vision given to him in Revelation chapter 1. And Christ's name is above every name. It's the only name given under heaven by which people must be saved. What a person does with the name of Jesus Christ and everything that stands behind it determines their eternal destiny. 
We are glad to confess and praise his name for humbling himself and saving us. Of course, there were at Jesus' time, and there still are, those who reject and revile his name. But on the last day, Paul says, all will bow the knee and honor Jesus. The unbelievers will do it to their eternal shame and regret. The devil and the demons will do it to their eternal frustration. But we and all believers will bow the knee to Jesus for our everlasting joy and glory. How does this impact our Christian living right now? Remember the verse right before this section. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. As children of God, therefore, we're willingly to humbly serve others for their good, just as Jesus did for us. We do this to show our thanks to Jesus, not to try and earn a reward of heaven. And yet Jesus does promise us a reward of grace. Paul told Timothy, if we died with him, meaning Christ, we will also live with him. If we endure with him, we will also reign with him. Let that exciting promise and prospect move you to humbly serve those in your life today. God bless you in that work. We'll see you tomorrow. Sweet the moments rich in blessing, which before the cross we spent. Life and death and peace possessing, felt the sinner's dying friend. Here we rest in wonder. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.